I need your help more than anyone. You certainly do, Jack. I had the most terrible vision. That's splendid. No, it was about your Christmas. There was smoke and fire. That's not my Christmas. My Christmas is filled with laughter and joy and this. My Sandy Claus outfit. I want you to make it. Jack, please listen to me. It's going to be a disaster. How could it be? Just follow the pattern. This part's red. The trim is white. It's a mistake, Jack. Now, don't be modest. Who else is clever enough to make my Sandy Claus outfit? Next! I have oh. every confidence in you. But it seems wrong to me. Very wrong. Story time about my darkest catfishing secret. I had just finished sophomore year of high school and it was summertime. My boyfriend at the time had just broken up with me for another girl named Emily. Emily and I had been friends and went to the same youth group together along with my now ex-boyfriend, Andrew. Andrew ended up going to prom with Emily just a few days after he broke up with me. I was heartbroken and extremely mad at them both. I felt betrayed by them, but more so Emily because she was supposed to be my friend and uphold girl code. I wanted to get back at her and brainstormed ideas on how to do so with my best friend, Marie. I suggested to Marie that we make a fake online profile of a boy, add Emily and catfish her. Marie was on board and one night when we were having a sleepover at her house, we made a fake account. We used photos of a mutual friend that we both knew, but Emily didn't know. We named the boy Scott, added Emily, and started talking to her. Some days Marie would talk to her, and other days I would talk to her as Scott. We also got a fake number and gave it to Emily so that she could text Scott. Emily and Scott would talk all day, every day. Marie and I even took driver's ed over the summer, and Emily was in our class. We would text her during class and watch her reactions when texting Scott. After a few weeks of talking, Emily told Scott that she loved him. However, Marie and I weren't satisfied, so we kicked things up a notch. Part 2 of my darkest catfishing secret. So after Emily admitted to our catfish profile, Scott, that she loved him, we made Scott very sick and eventually die off. We made another fake account of Scott's sister and had her deliver the news to Emily about Scott's passing. Emily was devastated. She reached out to me as myself and her ex-friend and said that she needed a friend to talk to because she was so depressed from Scott's passing. She told everyone at church about it and we all prayed for her continuously. Eventually, Emily healed from Scott's passing and we went our separate ways. A few years later, she started dating a new guy and became pregnant. Marie and I knew about Emily's pregnancy, but we weren't close to Emily anymore, so we only saw photos through Facebook and Instagram. A few months passed and one night I was getting ready to go to bed when Marie texted me. Her text read in caps, OMG, go look at Emily's Facebook. I was nervous but didn't think anything of it at the time. When I went to Emily's Facebook, I saw a photo of her baby in the most recent sonogram that she posted. The caption on the photo read, Mommy loves you already, Scott, with a heart. Emily had decided to name her baby after Scott, the boy that she'd fallen in love with and passed away. The boy who was never real and only a catfish account that Marie and I had made to get back at her for breaking girl code. I still feel bad about it to this day. Story time about how I escaped my abusive husband. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. My soon-to-be ex-husband is the most toxic person I've ever met in my entire life. We've been married for almost three years. We got married after four months of being boyfriend and girlfriend. And to be honest, no, we really didn't know each other. At the beginning, he was totally kind, generous, and really, really fun. We were always going to parties, and we had so many friends. Here's where things started getting scary. He never posted me on his Instagram. In fact, he rarely ever posted on his Instagram at all. I'm very active on social media. I'm constantly posting pictures of us together. The fact that he never posted me on his social media made me think that maybe he was trying to look for other girls. But then I found out the truth. One day I get a DM from this girl, and she told me how my boyfriend had abused her in the past. She even had to get a restraining order. She basically told me she wanted to warn me about him. I didn't respond to her message because I wanted to ask him first. I showed him the messages later on that day, and he went nuts. He punched the wall, and he slapped me straight across the face. Part two is up. He slapped me straight across the face and I fell to the ground. Claim this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. When he saw what he'd done, he started apologizing right away. Then he said that the girl who contacted me on Instagram to warn me about him was just his stalker. And that he had broken up with this girl, but she couldn't get over him. At the time, we weren't living together, so I went back to my mom's place. I didn't speak to him for a few days. Then he started coming over to my mom's house every single day with flowers, apologizing and begging me back. Unfortunately, I decided to forgive him. Two weeks later, he asked me to marry him. And I said yes. I posted a picture of my engagement ring on Instagram. And that's when I got another message from another girl. She told me that my boyfriend was abusive and that she also had to get a restraining order. I didn't know who to believe. I went to my mother-in-law's house and I asked her what had happened. And she basically told me that he has issues with his temper. I asked her if what the girl said was true. And she said it wasn't her business to say. A few weeks later, we got married. And that's when the real torture started. He became super controlling and mean. And when I wouldn't do something he wanted, he would lock me in my room for hours. Part 3 
husband would lock me in the bedroom for hours. But then it got worse. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. It got to the point that whenever he would get mad, he would either push me, shake me, or slap me. This went on for a year, but I always hoped that he would just change. After two years, I decided to get in contact with the women who said they got restraining orders against my husband. Met up with both of them at a cafe to lie to my husband and say that I was going to be late at work. They brought all their receipts. They had pictures and text messages, emails, and police reports. I couldn't believe it. I mean, I could, but at the same time, I couldn't, you know? If I had just paid attention to these girls before we got married, none of this would have happened. But these girls knew exactly what I was going through. So we hatched a plan of how I would escape my abusive husband. At this point, he controlled everything, my cell phone and my bank account. By the way, I hadn't told my mom anything at this point. When I asked her for money and I told her why, she was shocked. The plan would be that I was going to escape at night. I waited for Friday because I knew he'd go out with his friends to drink. I called an Uber, but a few minutes later, my husband shows up at our door. Part 4 is up. The night I was planning to escape my abusive husband, I called an Uber to the house, but my husband showed up two minutes later. Disclaimer, this is not my story time, it was sent to me on Instagram. As soon as he walks in through the door, he was totally drunk. That's when he told me that he was hungry. I pretended that everything was normal and that I didn't have an Uber coming to save me. I went to the kitchen, I made him a sandwich as quickly as I could. I came back out, took one bite, and started falling asleep. Thank God. I hid in my backpack behind a curtain, slowly grabbed the backpack and my shoes, and that's when my cell phone notified me that the Uber was there. I was terrorized at this point because I was hoping the noise from the cell phone didn't wake him up. I turned around, but he was totally passed out. I ran barefoot to the Uber, got in, and told him to drive away. Went straight to a friend's house and turned off my phone. Next day, I went straight to a lawyer to file for divorce. I had text messages and pictures. I also went to the police and they said that I can't file a restraining order yet. My husband, of course, is already looking for me. He went to my mom's house, but she didn't let him in. But here's the problem. I already miss him. He sent me an email apologizing, swearing that it won't happen again. My gut's telling me not to go back. What do you guys think? Story time about why I beat up my best friend. So a little background information. Her and I had been best friends since we were in seventh grade. Her family was rich. Mine was poor. And at first she was a really good friend. She was always there for me whenever I needed her. Until our freshman year of high school, which is when her and I started hanging out with boys. Now my mom was kind of strict. She wouldn't really let me hang out with boys, but her mom was more lenient about her hanging out with boys. Every weekend she would throw a party at her house and she would throw them in her attic because one, it was huge and two, her parents didn't give a fuck what she did up there. Anyways, she would always offer to do my hair and makeup before the party started. Which always made me really excited because I never really put any work into my physical appearance. Well, little did I know, the only reason why she would offer to do my hair and makeup at these parties was so that way she could make me look like shit in front of all the boys. So after that, I taught myself how to do my own makeup and do my own hair. Part two about why I beat up my best friend. So like I said, I learned how to do my hair and makeup and she went on vacation for like a month straight. Well, when she came home, she threw another party and she was like, don't worry, after I'm done getting ready, I'll do your makeup and do your hair. And I was like, no, it's fine. I got it. She literally looks at me and she goes, are you sure? You don't really know how to do that. Like, it'll probably look really bad. And I'm like, why the fuck would you say that? She goes, no, like, I don't mean it to be rude. It's just that like, I want you to look good in front of the boys and stuff like that. Like, sis tried to talk me into getting a shower for a full like 20 minutes. So after that, the whole night, she's literally being a pick-me girl. She's making all these comments about me in front of the boys. And I just keep brushing them off until her next party. We got ready and I put on these expensive shoes that I had just bought. And she goes, wow, you just like really like to copy my style, don't you? So she starts making comments that whole night about how my family's poor and stuff like that. And she threw up all over my shoes. So I dumped the trash can that everybody had threw up in that night on her, punched her in the face. But like two months later, she came to my house and apologized. Mm -hmm.